Hi, my name is John Salzman. I'm a consultant knee surgeon from Germany as well as Switzerland. Today I'm going to talk about a specific autocard procedure in a pediatric athlete. The patient came to my office. She's a 12-year-old female, sporting, very active, playing volleyball and playing soccer. She was reporting to me about chronic patella subluxation on both knee joints with in the last couple months pain and inability to perform sporting activities. And in the recent weeks, she had a further significant sub or even full luxation at her left knee joint, which increased the pain at that knee joint. And on top of that, some clicking phenomena. The clinical findings were that she had a clear valgus deformity at both lower extremities and she had a clear dynamic valgus when she was walking. She had a both-sided positive apprehension sign, which was positive up to 65 degrees of knee flexion. She had a slightly elevated BMI with a slightly fat thigh, which is even producing more valgus deformity. And on her left knee joint, she had a very clear patella clicking and increased pain during movement. On initial x-ray analysis, AP view, you saw a more or less normal knee joint with a slight patella alta position and open growth blades on the tibia as well as on the femur bone. But when performing full length x-rays, we saw that she had a very clear valgus deformity concurring to the clinical findings, which was on her right leg a little more than on her left leg, which was six degrees of valgus on her right side and four degrees of valgus on her left side. We performed MRI of both knee joints and saw a more or less normal MRI on her right knee joint with a good patellofemoral articulation. On her left MRI, patellofemoral view axial section, we saw also a pretty good patellofemoral joint, but some effusion, some excessive joint fluid, and a full thickness delaminated cartilage flap at the medial patella facet which was causing her clicking phenomena, which is clearly seen on that image. We performed in this case also a dynamic 4D gait analysis to see if the dynamic valgus is even more when comparing to the x-rays, but we saw here that the valgus under walking is exactly the same or has been exactly the same as when comparing to the x-rays. In summary, the patient had a two-sided patella instability a valgus deformity with still open growth plates on the femur as well as on the tibia. She had a full thickness symptomatic cartilage defect on her left patella. So we proceeded with operative surgery. On her left knee joint, we performed a standard diagnostic arthroscopy and under arthroscopy, we saw that delaminated cartilage flap, which is from our standpoint still vital. So we choose to collect that cartilage flap using a designated shaver device and collected that cartilage in the graft net tissue collector. Then we uh, could monitor how much cartilage we had uh, collected, which in this case was enough for transplantation because after debridement, the cartilage defect was not uh, larger than two square centimeters. After preparation of the defect and stabilizing the defect edges, and clearing out the subchondral bone, which was intact, and the opposing trochlea was also intact. We dried out the knee joint, performed an extra very far proximal medial portal, and then we put in a tissue swab to have some capsular distension, also to prevent further bleeding. And then we were uh, in a perfect setup to perform a fully arthroscopic autocard procedure at a medial patella using the cartilage flap that has been previously delaminated. We fixed that by autologous fibrin and had a very nice final product which was stable under full flexion extension maneuvers. Postoperatively, it was a minimally invasive approach, 30 minutes on every leg, and the patient was doing fine after surgery so far. The rehabilitation in this case was a fully functional rehabilitation on the right side 
On the left side, we decided to perform three weeks partial weight bearing at 15 kilograms and limited range of motion to 30 degrees in the first two weeks, 60 degrees week three and four, and to 90 degrees week five and six. And we progressed to full weight bearing commenced at four weeks and at six weeks. We allowed the patient to return to biking and swimming slowly 10 weeks after the operation to return to running five to six months after the operation. And we started sport specific training in this case, meaning volleyball and soccer at six months with a return to full competition and contact sports 12 months after the operation. The case summary here would be, this has been a fully minimally invasive, all at once, purely autologous biologic approach at both knee joints with a quick rehabilitation with the idea to have straight legs, which means also in the, at the same time have patella stability and with a good as possible cartilage repair at the patella, but using the autocart approach under arthroscopic settings on the left knee joint. In this case, we are very optimistic in that. Thank you very much.